Hey YouTube, what's going on? Snowflarky's emails here today with another deck profile. This is an update to my Amazonas deck profile. Amazonas is one of my favorite decks of all time. Just pretty cool, simple monsters with simple but useful effects and are very battle phase centric. I really like effects that, uh, you know, decks that make the battle phase important. And Amazonas does a lot of cool stuff with the battle phase. We got some new support fairly recently. So this is my updated profile and a little spoilers. This is kind of uh, more of a main deck uh, control style uh, Amazonas deck. Not as much using the new fusions. But with that said, let's get into the cards. Starting off with our monsters, we are playing three copies of Amazonas Princess. This is a great card, one of the great starters for the deck. It's a three-star, 1200 attack warrior monster. That's Amazonas. Its, co its card name becomes Amazonas Queen while it's on the field or in the graveyard. More useful if you're playing the fusion variant, but not as much here. And of course, if this card is normal or special summon, you can add an Amazonas Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. Uh, you can only use this effect of Amazonas Princess once per turn. And then when this card declares an attack, you can send one other card from your hand to the graveyard to special summon an Amazonas monster from your deck and defense position. So that's nice, uh, you know, allows you to get dead cards in the hand, get extra Amazonas on the field, so it swarms, it searches a card, uh, you know, lots of advantage to be generated off of Princess. Next, I'm playing three copies of the new Amazonas Warchief. Pretty awesome card to be uh, added to the deck here. A 1900 attack is a good body for an Amazonas monster. Now it is five stars, but it does have the effect that if you control no monsters or only Amazonas monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's nice. That's a free summon, a little bit of a free extension right there, which is pretty cool. And if this card is normal or special summon, you can set an Amazonas spell or trap or one polymerization directly from your deck. And you can only attack with Amazonas monsters for the rest of this turn. So that's pretty cool. Another card that gets us to our spell and trap cards. And just that advantage generation is going to be very nice into keeping our deck flowing. So that we can close out the game after we have our opponent locked down. Next, I'm playing two copies of the Amazonas Golden Whip Master. So pendulums are a new part of the Amazonas strategy. And while I don't find myself pendulum summoning often, uh, they make good cards because they can be additional monster bodies uh, to uh, you know finish off a game. Or they all have very useful effects when they are placed in the pendulum zone as a pendulum spell card. So Golden Whip here says that Amazonas monsters you control gain attack equal to their level times 100. So that's nice. Makes them a little beefier. And when an attack is declared involving your Amazonas monster, you can target a spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, uh, we had an Amazonas card already, Amazonas Sage, that had that effect, but it just gives that effect to all your Amazonas monsters in addition to an attack boost. So definitely a nice upgrade. And of course, this has a useful monster effect. If this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can place this card in your pendulum zone. So, you know, you can play it first, uh, bait out some removal, uh, you know, get it destroyed, and then just place it back in the pendulum zone, which is pretty sweet. And of course, if this card is in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can place this card in your pendulum zone. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just always has this card able to be put back onto the field, and that makes it pretty awesome. Uh, you know, three is a bit too much, but two is just fine. To go along with it, I am playing two Amazonas Silver Sword Master. A uh, Silver Sword Master is pretty sweet. It says if this, uh, you know, Amazonas monsters you control gain attack equal to their level times 100, like the gold one when it's in the pendulum zone. And of course, when an attack is declared involving an Amazonas monster, you can target an Amazonas spell or trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So that's nice. Get those cards back. Be able to play them on a follow-up turn. Pretty awesome. And of course, uh, the monster effect is the same as Gold Whip. If it's in the monster zone, destroyed by battle or card effect, you could put it in the pendulum zone. And then, of course, when it's in the graveyard, you're able to put it back in the pendulum zone too. So, you know, very useful. It always finds its way to the pendulum zone. Uh, next, the rest of the deck is the Amazonas one ofs I'm playing. I'm playing one Amazonas Queen. Queen is nice because it's 2400 attack, has an effect that says Amazonas monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle, which is awesome because the Amazonas monsters, while battle phase centric, don't always have huge attacks like Princess only has 1200 and Silver Whip only has 1200, things like that. And of course, Amazonas Queen's got 2400 attack, which is one of the highest for a main deck Amazonas monster. So a pretty good card to pull out of the deck and get onto the field. Next, I'm playing one copy of Amazonas Sage. 
Uh, this is mostly a one of I'm playing because I've been playing against a lot more back row decks, you know, things like Labyrinth and whatnot being popular. So even though we have the ability to pop a spell and trap with Silver Whip, it's nice to have Sage too, because Sage's effect just says at the end of the damage step, if this card attacked and is still on the field, target a spell or trap card, your opponent controls, and destroy it. So there we go, we get additional ability to pop cards. Very handy also if we don't have the Silver Whip ready to go. Next, I got one copy of Amazona Swordswoman. Swordswoman is nice here because it just says your opponent takes any battle damage you would take from battles involving this card. So you can use that to, uh, you know, do a lot of damage to your opponent, especially if you got Amazona's Queen on board and uh, can't be destroyed by battle. It means you can just ram into a big monster and defeat your opponent that way. But also pretty useful with, uh, you know, ramming, taking, giving your opponent damage when we have the trap card for removal. Uh, next, I'm playing a copy of Amazonas Chainmaster. Amazonas Chainmaster is a pretty interesting Amazonas monster. Four stars, 1,500 attack, but when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can pay 1,500 life points to look at your opponent's hand, select a monster card, and add it to your hand. So that's pretty cool. You know, just ram it, uh, remove a monster with the trap card, or and then, you know, when it's destroyed by battle, uh, stealing a card from your opponent's hand is pretty nice. Gives you hand knowledge, gives you a card out of their hand. Just pretty good. Next, I'm playing one copy of Amazonas Paladin. Paladin is in here mostly because uh, she's my favorite, so it's a little biased. But also, uh, Paladin is just pretty nice because this card gains 100 attack for each Amazonas monster you control. That includes herself. And uh, it's really easy to just fill your board with Amazonas monsters. And uh, having a higher attack beater in the deck is pretty nice. Because once we get things set up, uh, that little bit of extra attack just gives you more damage to close out a game a little sooner, and I find that pretty useful. And given that most of the Amazons are searchable when you need them, you can just wait until you're ready to push and get some extra damage in. In the same vein, I'm also playing one Amazonas Tiger, the classic. Tiger is nice here because he gains 400 attack for each Amazonas monster you control, and your opponent cannot attack any face-up Amazonas monsters except this. Now you can only control one Amazonas Tiger. Uh, that's normally so that if you're playing the regular version, Pet Baby Tiger is usually the better thing because it's recurring. But uh, Pet Baby Tiger just simply can't be get as big as Amazonas Tiger does. It's very easy to get this card over 2,500 attack, over well over 3,000 if you summon it off of Onslaught's effect. And uh, that is just so much attack to pass up. Closes games out a turn or sooner, sooner, which makes the difference a lot of the time. And that is it for the monsters. Next, going into our spell cards, I am playing two copies of Amazonas Village. Uh, cut this down from three to two because so many of the Amazonas spell and traps are searchable now that we can usually get our hands on it, and especially with the ability to recycle them from the grave means that if they get destroyed, you know, we don't have to clog up our main deck space as much. So Amazonas Village says that all face-up Amazonas monsters on the field gain 200 attack, which is nice. And then the real good effect, once per turn, when an Amazonas monster is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon an Amazonas monster from your deck with a level less than or equal to the monster destroyed. So that's nice. Makes all your Amazonas floats. And, uh, you know, if you float into something like Princess or if you float into something like Warchief, off of Warchief, you get to add a spell or trap card which, uh, you know, generates you advantage, and, uh, you know, you could pull the pendulums out of the deck, so just get you whatever Amazon you need, always keeps your board open, and have more monsters ready to go. Next, I'm playing three copies of Amazonas Call. Amazonas Call is pretty nice, because it's just a quick play spell that says take an Amazonas card from your deck, except Amazonas Call, and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. So, you know, searches out whichever Amazonas we need, normally a princess or a war chief if we're looking for it. And, uh, you know, and also sends them to the grave. I don't find that effect as useful, but uh, the flexibility is nice. And the quick play aspect of it means that you can play one of this on your turn. Set one, play it on your opponent's turn really quickly. Just always be generating card advantage, which is pretty nice. Um, this card also has the effect that you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one Amazonas monster you control, and it can attack... Uh, all monsters your opponent controls, but other monsters you control cannot attack. So that's pretty nice. If your opponent has a wide board, you don't have many monsters, but you can, you know, ram, uh, you know, not die by battle, and remove with the trap card. That is pretty sweet. So definitely a good card. Next, I'm playing three Pot of Extravagance. Um, I'm not messing around with the fusion aspect of this deck. That's something I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, this version I feel found has worked better so far. 
uh, but I'm still trying to figure out the fusion version. So since we're not really using our extra deck, uh, Pot of Extravagance is pretty good. We just banish those cards uh, to draw cards. We banish six cards randomly face down and draw two. Uh, you know, can't pass that up. Next, I'm playing one Pot of Duality. Um, there's a decent amount of turns where we won't be special summoning on our turn. And uh, when that happens, Pot of Duality to dig for a key card, maybe our Amazonas Trap card, maybe our Amazonas Princess, uh, whatever we're looking for uh, can just help that out. And, uh, you know, with only one, we're not going to see two so that we get stuck with only playing one. It's a decent enough card to just fill up some space. And last, I'm playing a copy of Reinforcement of the Army. Adds a level 4 lower warrior type monster from the deck to our hand. Uh, most Amazons are level 4 or lower, except some of the new ones. But there's enough level 4 or lower that it's definitely worth running as a one-off to search them. Especially because Princess is one of the ones we want to see the most and qualifies as being rota a bowl. And that's it for the spells. Getting into our trap cards here, uh, I'm playing two copies of Amazonas Onslaught. In this version of the deck, this deck, I this uh, card is kind of the lifeblood of the deck. Amazonas Onslaught is a pretty sweet continuous trap card that says once per turn during the battle phase, uh, you can special summon an Amazonas monster from your hand and it gains 500 attack. It's pretty nice for swarming and boosting the attack of our Amazonas monsters. And then of course, if an Amazonas monster we control battles an opponent's monster after damage calculation, if this card's already face up, you can banish that opponent's monster. And that's pretty sweet. That's non-targeting, non-destruction removal. And that deals with so many threats that this card is nasty and will be a bane to a lot of decks. And then, of course, if this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target an Amazonas monster in your graveyard and special summon it. That's pretty cool. Can get us a handy war chief or princess to search another copy or another card that's going to get to it to us. Uh, so yeah, this card's pretty awesome. It uh, you know allows our Amazonas monsters to pretty much always take care of our opponent's field. And what's nice about that is uh, even though uh, we're only playing two copies of this card, we can now get it back from the graveyard if it gets destroyed, because it's usually worth destroying, even though it's going to give us a monster. And uh, that just makes it nice. So very good card. Helps us deal with most monsters. Next up here, I'm playing some Floodgates that help this deck out a bit because they work pretty well with it. Playing two copies of Rivalry of the Warlords. Rivalry of the Warlords says that all monsters, uh, each player can only control one type of monster at a time. Uh, so this is pretty nice because all of our Amazonas monsters, except for Tiger, are warriors. So we can still play most of them. Just be careful if you have Tiger on the field and want to flip Rivalry. Uh, you know, you're going to need to make sure you have a way to get rid of of your tiger or uh, you know have another monster so you can get rid of tiger when you have to pick uh, but you know if your opponent is using multiple types uh, this card is going to be hard to deal with uh, in a similar vein we are playing two copies of goes and match it's like ravelry of the warlord except each player can only control one attribute now all amazonas monsters are earth attribute so uh, you know we're not too hindered by this but it can be very disruptive to an opponent in certain matchups and we are playing three copies of Summon Limit. Summon Limit is a really powerful trap card that says neither player can summon more than twice per turn. Uh, you know, Amazonas, uh, we can sometimes summon three or four times, but uh, most of the time uh, that's right in the limit of how many we're going to summon per turn, especially counting the fact that a lot of summons are going to be happening during our opponent's turn. So we can do two on our turn, two on our opponent's turn, and it's just going to disrupt a lot of combo decks when they can't uh, fully pop off because they summon two monsters, then you flip summon limit and they're kind of dead in the water, especially if we have Onslaught ready to remove them, banish for sure. So it's just a very powerful card, definitely one of the main win conditions of this deck, and this deck can use it well. Next, I'm playing three copies of Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment is pretty nice because we pay half our life points to negate a summon or spell or trap card activation. And if we do, uh, negate and destroy it. So this is pretty good for protecting our floodgates and just protecting our setup board. You know, if we've got our opponent limited because of our floodgates and our Amazonuses are popping off, uh, you know, if they get the Harpies by the Duster, the Lightning Storm, we don't want uh, that to resolve necessarily. So getting to Solemn Judgment helps us out with that quite a bit. And uh, it's a pretty just nice card to have in the lineup. 
And last, I'm playing two copies of Heavy Storm Duster. This is uh, just for dealing with all the back row decks I've been having to play against lately. Labyrinth, Trap Tricks, things like that are kind of up on the rise. So having a trap card that can destroy up to two spell or trap cards on the field is pretty nice. Now you can't conduct your battle phase during the turn you activate this card, but that's not a big deal. We're mostly playing it on our opponent's turn so that we don't have to worry about that. Uh, if you're not running into those decks or back row decks, you can always side this out for another good... Uh, you know, trap card, either another good floodgate, or uh, you know, you can play some waking dragons or more protection for your back row if you're worried about that. So, uh, just keep in mind that always make that change if needed. And of course, that is it for the main deck. Going over our extra deck really quickly since I'm not playing the fusion variant, I'm not playing the fusion cards. I've just loaded my extra deck with targets to play Waking the Dragon. If I wasn't playing Heavy Storm Duster, I would consider citing in Waking the Dragon, especially if somebody's trying to go hard in on the back row with Lightning Storm, Evenly Match, or uh, Harpy's Feather Duster. It's just nice to have a punish for it. Waking the Dragon just says if this set card in its owner's control on the field is banished because of an opponent's card effect and is now in the graveyard or banished. Uh, you can special summon one monster from your deck or extra deck. So we're going to load our extra deck with good targets to summon off of it. The first of which being Last Warrior from Another Planet. Last Warrior from Another Planet is nice because it's a uh, monster that just says that neither player can summon monsters. So if your opponent has an empty board when they board wipe you, you can summon Last Warrior from Another Planet. And now they can't summon any monsters. All they can do is set. You know, they better hope they have the Imperm, and uh, it's got 2350, so you can poke them down, or, uh, you know, just buy a lot of time until you're ready to pop off. But it's a pretty good card. Next, we're playing 3 Naturia Exterio. Uh, this card's pretty good in certain matchups, because Naturia Exterio here just says that, uh, you know, as long as you have a card in the graveyard already, which, uh, you know, you'll definitely usually will if you got Harpy's Feather Dusted, uh, you can negate spells or traps infinitely. You just got to banish a card from the grave and then send the top card of your deck to the graveyard, which of course gives you something for the grave for the next negate because it's not once per turn. And so whenever they activate a spell or trap, you just negate it. And pretty good for certain decks, you know, ritual decks like Necroz, something I play against that's pretty handy. Uh, you know, the, all the, 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 the Rise of the Trap card base decks like Trap Tricks and... Uh, Labyrinth, uh, you know, finds pretty decent use out of Naturia Exterio. Next, I'm playing three copies of Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. It's a 3,500 attack monster that's unaffected by other card effects, making it pretty hard to deal with. It means you got to destroy it by battle or a kaiju it or something like that. And, uh, you know, certain decks just aren't going to be able to handle it, so it's a good thing to summon in those matchups. Uh, next, I'm playing three Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon. Uh, it's a 4,500 attack monster that can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. So not as good as unaffected, but pretty good. And for 1,000 extra attack, it's pretty nice. Also has an effect that instead of attacking, you can just destroy a card on the field. So that's pretty handy. Uh, pretty cool card to go into. And last, I'm playing three copies of Geomathmech Final Sigma. It's a 3,000 attack monster that's unaffected by other card effects except Mathmech cards while in the extra monster zone, which you can easily put it there, no problem. And when it does battle damage to your opponent by battling a monster, it does double damage. So that's pretty nice in certain situations and makes it a good card to go into to uh, round out that extra deck. So that is it for my Amazonas deck profile. So yeah, pretty fun deck uh, that, uh, you know, makes use of the battle phase, makes use of, you know, simple effects on the monster themselves. And I quite like it, you know, generate some advantage and uh, play it out. It, it's a very fun deck, very much like it and uh, very pleased with the new support for it. I'll look into uh, figuring out the fusions, but so far I like this version better than trying to play the fusion, uh, but we'll see. I'm going to play around with it. I got all the cards. And uh, with that said, love to know what you're doing with Amazonas, uh, either on here or on Master Duel. So uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll catch you in the next one.